Welcome to a new video. My name is Myra Kagete. Today, I'm going to talk about the basic usage of should have, could have, and would have. There is a quiz at the end of the video, so listen carefully. Magumpisa tayo sa structures. Yung una ay should have, or yung pinaiksing form, yung shortened form na should have, plus the past participle form of a verb. Yung pangalawa naman ay could have, or yung shortened form na could have, plus the past participle form of a verb. Yung pangatlo naman ay would have, or yung pinaiksing form na would have, plus the past participle form of a verb. In fast speech, it is more common to say should have, could have, and would have. Siguro narinig nyo na rin yung should have, could have, and would have, but they are slang, okay? So we don't use them in formal situations and in writing. Okay, ano yung past participle form? Sa mga hindi pa nakakalam, I'll give you some examples. Buy, bought, bought. Tell, told, told. See, saw, seen. Yung bought, told, and seen ay nasa past participle form. So, yan yung mga unang-unang kailangan nating tandaan, yung structures nila. And syempre, kailangan you're also familiar with the past participle form of the verb that you're going to use in your sentence. Should've. Should've, could've, and would've are past modal verbs. So they are all used to talk about things that happened or did not happen in the past. Ibig sabihin, syempre, ginagamit natin ang mga yan kapag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay ang nakaraan. Now let me talk about should have. Ano ulit yung structure? Should have or simply should've plus the past participle form of a verb. Kapag yung sentence nyo naman ay nasa negative form, syempre ang kailangan yung gamitin ay should not have or simply shouldn't have plus the past participle form of a verb. Should have or should've is used for talking about things that did not happen but we wish had happened. So it's like regretting what you did or did not do. Merong pagsisisi o merong paninisi. Ang keyword dyan ay regret. For example, nagtake ka ng exam. Alam mong may exam ka, actually, pero hindi ka naghanda para sa exam na yon. Hindi ka nag-review para sa exam na yon. Now, ang ending, ang result ay bumagsak ka. So, of course, it's already a past event. So, nagsisi ka kasi nga hindi ka naghanda, hindi ka nag-review para sa exam ninyo. So, ang sasabihin mo sa sarili mo, I should have prepared for the test. Or, I should have prepared for the test. O kaya naman, I should have studied for the exam. Or, I should have studied for the exam. Dapat sana naghanda ako, dapat sana nag-aral ako para sa exam. So, merong pagsisisi, hindi ba? So, ang ginamit natin dyan ay should have or should have plus the past participle form of the verb prepare. Yan ay prepared. O kaya naman, should have or should have plus studied, which is the past participle form of study. Another example, let's say na-offend mo yung kaibigan mo kasi nagbiktaw ka ng masakit na joke. Okay, so na-offend yung kaibigan mo, nakapagsalita ka ng bagay na akala mo ay nakakataba. Pero ang ending, syempre, ang, ang result ay na-offend yung kaibigan mo. So you say to yourself and to your friend, I should not have said that, I'm sorry. Or I shouldn't have said that, I'm sorry. Merong pagsisisi, merong regret. So yung structure I should not have, and then yung past participle form ng verb, which is said, or simply shouldn't have, and then said. I'll give you another situation. So let's say nagpunta ka sa isang party, napakaraming pagkain sa party, bongga yung party. So ikaw, kumain ka ng kumain kasi nga napakadaming pagkain sa party. So feeling mo, pagkakataon mo na na kumain ng madami. Ngayon, pag uwi mo sa bahay, naramdaman mo masakit yung chan mo. So naimpatso ka, naramdaman mo yung epekto ng pinagagawa mo sa party. So you say, I should not have eaten too much at the party. Or, I shouldn't have eaten too much at the party. Merong pagsisisi. In Filipino, dapat sana hindi ako kumain ng napakarami sa party. And should have is also used when giving advice about what happened or what did not happen in the past. Ang isa pang key word for using should have or should have ay advice. Yung should ay ginagamit nga natin when giving advice, hindi ba? Pero ang should have or should have ay ginagamit for giving advice about the past. Let's go back to the first example that I gave you a while ago. Yung tungkol nga sa pag-e-exam or pagbagsak sa exam kasi nga hindi ka naghanda o hindi ka nag-prepare para sa exam na yon. 
Ngayon, nalaman ng nanay mo. You should have prepared for the exam. Or you should have prepared for the exam. Dapat sana naghanda ka o dapat sana nag-aral ka para sa exam ninyo. Okay? So, merong advice about something that already happened in the past. I'll give you another situation. Halimbawa, ikinasal ka. Okay? So, sa kasal ninyo, nagkaroon ng problema. Kasi yung isa sa inimbitahan mong tsahin ay hindi lang nagdala ng plus one, kung hindi plus ten. So, syempre, ang nangyari, naubusan or nagkulang yung pagkain at naubusan ng upuan yung mga taong talaga namang invited sa, sa wedding. And a few days after the wedding, of course, nagtsikahan na kayo ng asawa mo at saka ng mga magulang mo tungkol dun sa mga nangyari dun sa, sa kasal ninyo. And then, ang sabi ng magulang mo, you should not have invited her or you shouldn't have invited her. So, should not have plus invited, which is the past participle form of the verb invite. So, in Filipino, dapat sana, hindi mo na siya inimbitahan. So, merong advice tungkol dun sa past event or past decision. Now, punta naman tayo dun sa could have or could have. Ano nga yung structure? Yung could have or could have plus the past participle form of a verb. Kapag nasa negative form naman yung inyong sentence, you can say could not have or simply couldn't have plus the past participle form of a verb. Could have or could have is used for talking about something that was possible or you had the ability to do something in the past but you did not do it. Ang keywords for using could have or could have ay yung possibility and ability in the past. For example, I could have left you, but I decided to stay. Or I could have left you, but I decided to stay. So could have and then left. So yung left ay yung past participle form ng verb na leave. Okay, ibig sabihin yan, kayang-kaya kitang iwan. Okay? May kakayahan akong iwanan ka, pero nanatili ako kasama mo. Again, yung could ay ginagamit when we are talking about possibility and ability in the past. Another example, they could have won the competition, but they did not try hard enough. Or, they could have won the competition, but they didn't try hard enough. So, could have won. Of course, yung won ay yung past participle form ng win. So, ibig sabihin, kayang-kaya sana nilang manalo. Okay? Posible sana na manalo sila. Kaya lang, hindi nila ibinigay yung best nila. So, again, we're talking about something that was possible or something that you had the ability to do something in the past, but you did not do it. Another example, and malamang narinig nyo na to before, yung I could not have done it without you, or simply I couldn't have done it without you. Could not have, and then done. So of course yung done ay yung past participle form ng do. So, I couldn't have done it without you. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ko sana kayang gawin yon. Pero dahil nandyan ka at sinusuportahan mo ko, okay, nandyan ka sa tabi ko, nagawa ko yon. Minsan, nagpapasalamat tayo sa mga taong sumusuporta sa atin, hindi ba? So, we say, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. For me, mas madaling matandaan yung could have or could have. Kasi nga, yung term na could, and it starts sa k sound, and it is linked to the term kakayahan in Filipino. So, k, could, k, kakayahan. Now, let's talk about would have or would have. Ano nga ulit yung structure? Yung would have or simply would have plus the past participle form of a verb. Or kapag nasa negative form naman ang inyong sentence, you say would not have or simply wouldn't have plus the past participle form of a verb. Would have or would have is used for talking about something that you were willing to do in the past, but you did not do it because of some reasons. Ito madali din tong matandaan kasi yung would ay nagsisimula sa W and yung willingness ay nagsisimula rin sa W. Ang keyword jan ay willingness, okay? Gusto mong gawin in the past pero hindi mo ginawa dahil syempre merong mga dahilan. I'll give you a situation. Let's say, hindi ka naka-attend sa dinner date ninyong mga magkakaibigan kasi you were so busy at work. So, meron kang kailangang tapusin. So, ang ending or ang result, hindi ka nga nakapunta dun sa dinner date ninyo. We're talking about a past event, okay? Kahit gusto mo, okay, willing ka sanang pumunta, kaya lang hindi ka nga nakapunta kasi busy ka sa trabaho. 
So we're talking about a past event. Tapos ngayon, katsikahan mo sa phone yung isa sa mga kaibigan mo. And you say, I would have gone to our dinner date, but I was so busy at work. Or simply, I would have gone to our dinner date, but I was so busy at work. So, would have gone or would have gone. Yung gone is yung past participle form ng go. Gusto mo sana. Okay? Gusto mo sanang pumunta, kaya lang hindi ka nga nakapunta dahil busy ka sa trabaho. Di ba merong willingness to do something, pero hindi mo nga ginawa kasi merong dahilan. Another example, nag-uusap kayo ng little sister mo and she starts complaining about her homework. Sabi niya hindi niya nagawa yung homework niya kasi napakahirap. Ang ending, hindi siya nakapag-submit sa teacher niya. So we're talking about a past event na, okay? Kasi nangyari na, hindi na siya nakapag-submit ng homework kasi nga nahirapan siya. Now you say to your sister, I would have helped you with your homework but I did not know you needed help. Or, I would have helped you with your homework, but I didn't know you needed help. Tutulungan sana kita, kaya lang hindi mo naman sinabi sa akin na kailangan mo ng tulong. Okay? We're talking about willingness to do something in the past, but you did not do it kasi hindi mo naman nalaman na kailangan niya pala ng tulong. Actually, ang would have or would have plus the past participle form of a verb is also used in third conditional sentences. So mga hindi pa nakakaalam, yung mga conditional sentences, yan yung may mga if clauses. Yung if I were a boy, if I had known, if I see her, if I were in your shoes, yung mga may if clauses. May apat na basic types of conditional sentences at ang isa nga sa kanila ay tinatawag na third conditional. Ang structure ng third conditional sentence ay if plus a subject plus had and then a verb in its past participle form. Tapos, subject plus would have or would have plus the past participle form of a verb. For example, if I had known you were having difficulty with your homework, I would have helped you with it. Or simply, I would have helped you with it. Kung nalaman ko lang sana na nahihirapan ka pala dun sa takdang aralin mo, edi sana tinulungan na kita. Pwede rin natin pagbalik na rin yung dalawang clauses na yan. Pwede ninyong bangitin yung uh, part na merong would have. So you can say, I would have or I would have helped you with your homework if I had known you were having difficulty with it. The third conditional is used for talking about things that didn't happen. Okay, so we're just imagining the result of something if it happened. So here we're talking about an imaginary situation. Ini-imagine na lang natin yung bagay na hindi na natin maibabalik. Ini-imagine na lang natin kung ano sana yung nangyari kung ginawa o kung nangyari yung isang bagay. Katulad dito sa example na binigay ko sa inyo. So hindi mo na maibabalik yung nakaraan. Okay? Kasi hindi na siya nakapagpasa ng homework. Uh, umabot na dun sa deadline ng submission ng task. Hindi mo siya natulungan kasi hindi niya naman sinabi sa'yo na kailangan niya ng tulong. So, we're just talking about a past event na hindi na natin may babalik. Now, take a look at the example sentences. Dun sa unang sentence na una yung if clause, di ba? Dun sa pangalawang sentence naman, nasa bandang hulihan yung if clause. Now, in writing, kapag nauuna yung if clause, kailangan merong comma after it. Okay? Kapag nasa bandang hulihan naman yan, hindi na kailangan lagyan ng comma before it. I'll give you another example sentence. If his parents had allowed him to go to college, he would have become a doctor or he would have become a doctor. Kung pinayagan lang sana siyang uh, mag-aral ng mga magulang niya sa college, edi sana naging doktor na siya. Siyempre, pwede rin natin pagbalikta rin yung dalawang clauses na yan. We can say, he would have become a doctor if his parents had allowed him to go to college. Or he would have become a doctor if his parents had allowed him to go to college. Naging doktor sana siya kung pinayagan siya ng mga magulang niya na pumunta sa college or mag-aral sa college. Kaya lang, hindi ganun yung nangyari. So again, we're talking about a past event na hindi na natin kayang ibalik. So, ini-imagine na lang natin yung kung ano sana yung nangyari kung nangyari ang isang bagay. Now, let's start the quiz. Complete the following sentences using the phrases would, should've, could've, or would've based on the given situations. Number one, 
The situation is, you really wanted to go to the beach with your friends last weekend, but you got sick. Now you're talking to your friend and just say, I blanked to the beach with you, but I got sick. A. Should have gone. B. Could have gone. C. Would have gone. The answer is C, would have gone. You were willing to do something in the past, but you didn't do it because of a certain reason. Number two, the situation is your best friend is giving you some advice about saving money. Now your best friend says, you blank saving money a long time ago. A, should have started. B, could have started. C, would have started. The answer is A, should have started. It's about giving advice about an action that you didn't do in the past. Number three, the situation is you feel very sleepy and you cannot concentrate at work. You regret that you didn't sleep early last night. You say to yourself, I blank to bed early. A, should have gone. B, could have gone. C, would have gone. The correct answer is A. Should have gone. You are regretting that you did not sleep early last night. Number four. The situation is you passed the entrance exam at a prestigious university, but you decided not to continue your education. You started working instead. Now you say, I blanked Harvard University, but I decided to start working instead. I don't have any regrets about it. A. Should have gone. B. Could have gone. C. Would have gone. The answer is B. Could have gone. It's about an ability and possibility in the past. Don't forget to like this video if you learned something new today. You can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed I'll yet. Just see you again next time. Bye!